big week ahead in the racing world with the artist formerly known as Glorious Goodwood, now the Qatar Goodwood Festival. Lots to look forward to. Now we're going to have daily bits, bets, previews from the from the team throughout the week. But we're just going to sort of try to set the scene for the first two big races, or two of the first big races. Joined by Ben Linfoot and Kieran Clark. And Tuesday, Goodwood Cup. Now there's various narratives that are going to run through it, but the main one's around Stradivarius. This could be the final career start, Ben. When you see his career in numbers, when you see what this horse has done it would be the the last act of a remarkable career oh he's been fabulous hasn't he uh, eight years old now and and still performing to a high level four goodwood cups in that top left wood corner can he make it five that's the big question obviously the jockey situation is going to be the big narrative heading into the race no frankie dottori jocked off for andrea razzini who's three from three on him um, so it's all set for a, a fabulous contest the big rival is the ascot gold cup winner kid prios who sets the standard now uh, against an ageing Strad, you would think. And if he can't do it here at Goodwood, where he's won it four times before, we know that it's, it's time to call the curtain, I think, because he's just been superb at this meeting over the years. Let's find a line on Stradivarius. I think, Kieran, my own fit is that Frank would be quite relieved not to be on him. I think you're going to hide into You've got a horse who's running consistently to 120 time form performance rate in his last two seasons. He was a 127, 128 in his peak. To win Group 1's running to 120, absolutely everything's got to fall your way. Yeah, 100%. And I think too much has been made of the ride last time, to be honest. Yeah, he was. I think he was a bit mentally scarred from last year when he got caught on the inside. So he spent the race trying to get out while he's been hemmed in by the winner. But he's just not got the legs that he used to, Strad. He can't instantly quicken like you know he still finds off the bridle but he just doesn't have that instant turn of foot and yeah like you say I think he might be relieved because it, the pressure's off now isn't it he, you know it's it's that scene he's ride and if something similar happens it it happens that's racing interesting Frank you got a ride in against him we obviously don't know at this stage let's have a look at the time from ratings then for this Goodwood Cup it's and this is a very weather dependent now Aidan O'Brien on Friday morning confirms Kiprios comes over the Gold Cup winner. That's wonderful. He's 1-2-6. One, 1-2-4. Two, one, two, We've got a mighty 1-3-3 three, three weight adjusted for True Shan Kieran after he won that Northumberland plate under top weight at Newcastle. Looking at that weather forecast though for Alan King and the team, it looks like they might be thwarted again. Yeah, it, it, there's no rain forecast and it's got to remain quite hot. So unfortunately, we're probably not going to see True Shan on, until the, the back end of the season. We were joking in the office, we might not see him until all weather finals day, but... Um, yeah, it is a shame because he, he's such a good horse and he, he's probably looking at the, the Cadron and Champions Day again. But um, without him, we've still got a good race in, in prospects. We've got the up-and-coming stayer in Kiprios, who I've been really impressed with him the last twice. He's, he's, he battles. He has his own way of going about things early on, but he really does find, and he, he quickens. He's got a lot of form over shorter which helps scoop. He does battle and he does find and I thought when we saw his three-year-old career even at the end of his two-year-old career in the Zetland Stakes and in the Lingfield Derby trial I thought oh we've got a, we've got a Galileo here who, who's got a bad attitude you know he's got his own ideas about the game <laughs> but as he's got older um, certainly now into his four-year-old career he's really knuckling down and he does respond and find a hell of a lot for pressure so that uh, um, thought I had of him as a younger horse has completely gone now and he's, he's the real deal. That, that Gold Cup Ascot wasn't run at a strong gallop at all, was it? For, for a two and a half mile race, it turned into a speed test. Yeah. Would that have suited him that day, do you think? I think, I think it does, because when it, was it the Savile begging one over uh, a mile and three quarters of time before where he sprinted clear and an out and out gallop at two and a half, he was unproven over it and there was potential stamina doubts coming into it, but because they didn't go quick, it really suited him and Goodwood did a speed track as well. Um, looking at the race, I don't know if there's that much pace on again next week, to be honest. Um, and I think Ryan will just try to keep it simple. Although, like we said, he does have his own way of thinking about things. So it just depends um, how he's going to be ridden. Ben, you were talking just before we came live on air uh, about you thought Coltrane had a squeak as prize. Kevin, I'm not spoiling it, disagreed. But what's the case for Coltrane? Well, away from the big two, uh, pre presuming True Shan doesn't run, it doesn't look much of a race in terms of opposition. But if, if there's one horse on the up, it's Coltrane, who uh, has won his last two, was second in the Chester Cup behind Cleveland, uh, then won at Ascot, and then last time at Sandown, put in a, a career-best performance by a long way in pulling 10 lengths clear of R Rodrigo Diaz. Now, the leaders did go hard that day, and it did fall into the lap of putting in a, a good performance with a big winning margin, absolutely granted. So perhaps he was a little flattered by the winning margin, but I still think he's a, 
he's a stayer uh, massively on the upgrade. Andrew Baldwin was saying that he had a nasty injury and it took him a while to, to come on from that. He had a couple of runs on the all-weather before Chester and he said it was only really after Chester he started to find himself again. So with that in mind, you look back to when he won the Melrose as a three-year-old, he's always been a, a, quite an exciting player in this division and I think we're now only seeing the real talents that he's got and this is going to be his toughest test uh, in the Goodwood Cup next week but um, he he might be up to running really well and if there's one horse that could put it up to the big two it's definitely him. You could see him ending up something like a Melbourne Cup horse couldn't you? Could I think that's the long term plan with yeah. him definitely. Yeah, so most of them now isn't it with the money on offer in Australia <laughs> yeah. you, you can aim at the Melbourne Cup you do. Wednesday we've got the Qatar Sussex X a fantastic renewal we've got Baid and we've got the classic generation taking him on there. Now it says a lot about Baid, Kieran, that a weight adjusted 138 rating still has him six pounds clear of a promising and potentially still progressive 2000 kiddies winner in Caribus. Yeah, Baid's a, he, he's blown me away from, from the word go, really. Even when he was winning sort of minor events at Newmarket last year, he was doing them in ridiculously quick times. And it's the way he goes about things as well. I've not seen a horse travel like him since Frankel, to be honest. He, he just cruises up and and quickens away and then he, last time at Ascot he did just enough when needed. Um, time form says he's a dominant man of his generation and it, it's very hard to disagree with that. He's, he's got everything going for him and he's probably going to take the Frankel route after this and go Judmont and Champion Stakes but he'll take an awful lot of beating. Let's have a look at the uh, Bayid Caribus head-to-head scoop. It, 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 at least this does give us something different. It's a fresh test for Bayid which he hasn't been having of late. Yeah and I think it's his toughest test um, when you look at how Caribus won the 2000 guineas, travelled really strongly, showed a smart turn of foot to, to seal the deal. I don't think it was at his best last time in the St James's Palace Stakes, but he's still got the job done. And that form looks pretty good. I wouldn't underestimate it. You know, the horses in behind have come out and run well. Uh, so I think getting eight pounds, he's a, he's a danger to Bayed. I think it is Bayed's toughest test. But like Kieran says, he's, he's been head and shoulders above everything he's faced so far. Um, looks the real deal. I think he'll probably be good enough again. And uh, then we'll go on and see him, see what he can do at 10 furlongs after this. Mm. Let's have a look at him winning the, the Lockinge at Newbury. Because in many ways, what he did at Rye Lotka afterwards, he was beating these same horses again. What is it? Is it the way he goes through the race that impresses you most, Kevin? Yeah, you just see here, he's, you know, these are, these are Group 1 horses. And he's just come there on the bridle to, to challenge, which is most impressive. But then it's, it's when Jim Crowley asks him, it's that instant turn of foot as well. In a blink of an eye there, he's put four lengths between him and Real World and left the likes of Alcohol Free and Chindit, you know, standing in it lit. It's, it's just unbelievable the turn of footy shows and, he, he, you know, the track's not going to be an issue. He, he won the thoroughbred stakes here last year just by the six and a half lengths and, um, yeah, he's, he's, it's pretty obvious but he's my favourite horse in training even though he's, he's so good and it, you're never going to get a price about him. It, I just love watching him. There's no chinks to him, is there? He's no. so straightforward, so classy. It's very hard to uh, to find a reason why why he can get beat. You can say this is his toughest test, but you do expect him to come through it. The exciting thing here is he's taking on Caribus, the Guineas winner over a mile. Next time he's going up to ten furlongs, God willing, the Derby winner might be waiting for him there in in Desert Crown. He, he, he promises to. He's had a couple of penalty kicks so far, through no fault of his own, in two Group Ones. Mm. That, that's what a dominant miler gets sometimes, an older miler. But he could, the season could be defined by these next two races for Bayed. Absolutely, yeah, and this is why this time of year is so good, isn't it? Uh, and why Glorious Good has been so good over the years, because it's the fir- you know one of the first times we see the three-year-old milers take on the, the older horses. And uh, it's it set up to be a real real good race this year with the impressive 2000 Guinness winner against Bay. Bay has just been so good. You can see why he's so prohibitive in the market. Mm. Um, but that doesn't take anything away from the race. He's still got to go and do it, and it should be a great spectacle. I can't leave this without a word on last year's winner, Alcohol Free. She bounced, we saw her, she was in running behind Bayeed, but she bounced back to win the July Cup last time, back to sprinting. But this, she won the race last year. How deep a Sussex takes was this, Ben? Oh, I don't think it was deep. Uh, the three-year-olds dominated, didn't they? I think the first three home here were all three-year-olds, and um, I don't think this form worked out particularly well. Uh, Alcohol Free, she was always a bit keen over a mile, 
and got the job done as a three-year-old a couple of times, but she was keen over a mile uh, when she started a four-year-old career, so they, they dropped her back to six. It would be a remarkable training performance if dropping back to six and winning a July Cup um, made her relax more when she went back up to a mile. We're going to see that next week. Uh, but I'd, I'd have my worries about her in this company uh, when it comes to settling and, and going through her effort later on. Yeah, that was my big worry as well, because I think the drop back to sprinting at Ascot was a real shock to the system. She never really travelled with any zest. She got outpaced. And then last time at Ascot, she was really on the speed. New Mackey, yeah. And she pulled quite hard when she won this last year. And this is a better renewal. I just worry you go. But thinking about last year's renewal, she Murphy took an age to settle her. And I think um, Rob Holmby's probably going to be on again. But yeah, she's just got a lot to find, hasn't she, really? Yeah, fantastic. Two, and uh, only two of the big races at Goodall. We've briefly taken a look at As I said, we'll be back every day next week with our big race previews for the action from the Qatar Goodwood Festival. <laughs>